will change. Yeah. Uh, I should say, I should thank you. I, I can't speak for everybody else. But I thank you for the wonderful change that's come over me. And since I have that change, I just want to be grateful uh, for all that you've done for me. Most of all, for dying at Calvary. Mm -hmm. yes. Taking my place, being buried and then raised again. Yes. That I might have eternal life. And it's grateful uh, for the many blessings that you bestowed in this life. Now, pray now that you forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me from unrighteousness. Stand in and speak for me. Let the words of my mouth and meditation of my heart be acceptable. In thy sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. This is my Somali prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I want to thank Pastor Washington. Amen. Amen. Seven thousand sheep, 
500 yoke of oxen and 500 she asses. That's not custom, that's donkeys. So we know, because I'm going to say it some more. So I'm going to tell oh, Pastor, cussing no, I'm not. That's you, since you know what it is. I'm telling you what the Bible talking about. Amen. Because <laughs> I'm going to say it three or four more times. We're going to hold it. Here it goes. Sound familiar, you know. Amen. We're talking about donkeys. Amen. Last time I said donkeys in the Bible and then said that, that word. Why did you say that? So I'm saying it. Amen. All right. <laughs> he had ten children. Yeah. Seven sons and three daughters. Yeah. A lovely wife. He had servants. Job had everything so much so that he was this man that God called perfect and upright. Mm -hmm. He was an upright man who shunned evil. Yeah. With all of his goods, with all of his wealth, with all of his possessions, he made sacrifices for his children just in case they sinned out of his presence. He was a good husband. He was a good father. He was a good man in the community. And one day Satan presents himself with the sons of God. And God said to Satan, essentially, since you don't have anything to do, have you considered my servant Job? Well. And Satan said, I've considered it. You know, I've thought about him. I've had him on my list for a while. But, but, but you have a head around him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, you're protecting him. Yeah. You, you got a fence around him, guarding him. I tell you what, yeah. remove the head, yeah. and I'll make him curse you to your face. Mm -hmm. God says, say, do whatever you want with him, but there's a certain point yeah. you yeah. can't go past. Yeah. Yeah. And let me say this to somebody today who's complaining about life and grumbling about your situation. You don't know that there just might be a conversation taking place in heaven. Between God and yes, Satan yes, about you. God wants to prove and test you, not to destroy you. Yeah, yeah, he wants yeah, to develop yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. And the only way he can develop you to grow up to the person he wants you to be, yeah. you've got to go through some stuff. Yeah, yeah. There's drama that's going on behind the curtain that Job has no idea about. God says, try Job. And so Satan is given leave to go after Job, and he takes all of Job's earthly possessions. Yeah. He loses all of his cattle, loses all of his sheep, loses all of his oxen and all of his she asses. And then his children are at a party at their oldest boy's house. And the storm comes and destroys the house, and the only servant alive comes to give Job the news. And after that, he loses his fortune. After he's sitting in the ruins of his children's grave. After he's lost all of his livestock, everything he possessed is now in ruins. And Mrs. Job comes on the scene and says, baby, now is a good time to curse God and die. He said, you sound like a foolish woman. You don't sound like that beautiful bride that I'm there. You don't receive good at God's hand and then when the script flips, you, you turn your back on God. Let me say something about this prosperity gospel while I'm here. This, this naming and claiming is nonsense. Faith is not just receiving what you want from God, but it also accepts what God sends. And what God sends may not necessarily be what you want. That's right. But if God is good in the sunshine, you ought to be able to trust him in the rain. Somebody here has been down to your last dime without a job. And before you, you, you turn, you put your back up against the wall, God made a way out of no way. If you learn to trust God when you don't have nothing, you show enough can praise him when you get another job. So he loses everything. Then his so-called friends show up to comfort him. Suffering and trials will not only reveal what's in you, but it will reveal the character of the people around you. Yeah. You be careful who's around you. Because right. everybody in your circle don't belong there. Yeah. Everybody who's trying to get in your circle don't belong there because they have some of their own motives as to why they want to nestle up to you. Because there's some private and secret things that belong only to you and God. Amen. And sometimes that requires 
you to get some folk off your Facebook page. Yeah. Don't put all your business on Facebook and then get upset when it's repeated all over town. You need to get you some serious friends and a serious life. Stop trying to live like you're in a reality show and recognize that you're not going to be developed into the man or woman God wants you to be if you're going to be having your business all over Facebook and Instagram. You need to understand you're going to have to go through a season of suffering. It was doubtful that God will use you greatly until he's hurt you deeply. Yeah. Jesus said, I am the true vine. Yeah. My father is the vine dresser. Mm -hmm. And every branch that's not bearing fruit, he, he throws it away. He burns it in the fire. Mm -hmm. He cuts it. Mm -hmm. He slices it. He bruises it. And he prunes it that it might bear more fruit. Story is told of a young lady who graduated from the Conservatory of Music in New England. And she was a tremendous singer. And there was this man who was a professor of music rhetoric that came to hear her sing. And after hearing her sing, he said to her, one day, you're going to have a beautiful voice. And she was, she was already trained now in this New England Conservatory of Music. So in her youthful arrogance, she said to him rather angrily, after putting her hands on her hips and moving her head around, when am I going to get this beautiful voice? And he said to her, when your heart is broken. You're not ready to preach. You're not ready to teach. You're not ready to sing or witness until your heart been broken. But in some things God can teach you in the night seasons, you'll never learn in the sunshine. Somebody here is going through some dark nights. Uh, you, you've been through some dark trials that God has brought you out, and he put something on your face, put something in, in your voice, and put something in your handshake. And you don't even need to be at church to give God the glory. Amen. You don't need to be at your section or on your favorite pew to give God the glory. If he's brought you out, then when you think about the goodness and mercy and favor and love of God that you don't deserve, that's reason to give him glory. So, so Job loses it all. His friends come to him and sit with him and they tell Job, say to Job, look, tell us the truth, man. What's really going on? You, you must be suffering for a reason. Look at you. Uh, your sores all over your body. And when you take off the little cloak, that the sores all stuck to the cloak. What's wrong with you? You wouldn't be going through this if you hadn't done something wrong. So the reason you're suffering is because you see it. Well, that's a, that's a lie. Because Jesus suffered and never seen it. God does not send suffering to destroy us. He sends it to develop us. Because we can never be all that God wants us to be until we grow up. Job lost it all. His friends tried to come and comfort him and told him he must have done something wrong. And so for 30 or so chapters, Job rails against God. He complains. Mm -hmm. uh, he wants his birthday wiped off the calendar. Yeah. He said, well, may it not be remembered that a man child was conceived. Yeah. If, I, if I were to be born, I wish I was born dead. He said, I wish I was still born. I wish I would have come out of my mother's womb dead if I knew I had to go through all these struggles. Yeah. I'm tired of suffering. Yeah. I'm tired of the pain I'm in. Yeah. And he says, God, if I knew where you, I could find you. Yeah. I'd rise and bring my case before you. If I just knew where you are, I'm not scared to talk to you. I just want to know where you are. I want to complain to your face, but I don't know where you are. And God listened to this nonsense for 38 chapters. In chapter 38, he said, Joe, I heard you looking for me. Put some clothes on and stand up here and talk to me like you got some sin. Don't look at my face, though. Don't talk about me behind my back. Talk to me to my face. Say all that stuff you've been saying about me from chapter 2 to chapter 3. Talk to me, Joe. But before you start rattling off, and, and, and my oldest daughter, and before you start bumping your gums, before you open your mouth, let me ask you some questions. Yes, I got some questions for you, Joe. Where were you when the morning stars danced with the evening star? Where were you when the sons of God shouted for joy? Where were you when I laid the foundation of the earth? Tell me, Joe, if you know so much. Yes, who determined its dimension? Stretch out the surveying lines. Who kept the 
see in his boundaries. Yeah. Have you ever commanded the morning to appear and cause the dawn yeah. to rise in the east? Well, yeah. Joe, where were you? Yeah. Have you made daylight yeah. spread to the ends of the earth? Yeah. Yeah. Do you know where the gates of death are located? Yeah. Where does light come from, Joe? Yeah. And where does darkness go? Yeah. Who makes the rain fall on barren land in the desert where nobody lives? Yeah. Yeah. Joe, well, let me ask you this. Does rain even have a father? Who is the ice, mother of ice? Yeah. Who gives birth to the frost from the heavens? On, Can you shout to the clouds and make it rain? Yeah. Who is wise enough to count all the clouds? And Joel, let me drop this on you. Do you know the stars by their names? Yeah. Job said, God, I'm sorry. Yeah. I've uttered things too wonderful for me to understand. Yeah. Then God in chapter 2 gives him back double everything he lost, yeah. but it should. Yeah. All right. He lost everything. Sheep, camel, oxen, yeah. she asses, and children. Yeah. God gave him double for his trouble, except for his children. Yeah. He had 3,000 camels. God gave him 6,000. Yeah. Had 7,000 sheep. God gave him 14,000. Yeah. Had 500 yoke of oxen. God gave him 1,000. Uh -huh. Had 500 she asses. God gave him 1,000. Yeah. He had 10 children, but God didn't give him 20. He gave him 10. Yeah. So why did God give him double everything? But it should. Because everything he lost in terms of material things, the devil stole. But his children God took. And when God takes a thing, you never lose it because you know where it is. My mama's not lost. God's got My dad is not lost. God's got My brothers are not lost. God's got it. And and Judah's not lost. God got it. The last words of Job. Say they died a man full of years. Yeah. The last verses. Yeah. Let me go back to chapter one and tell you why God gave him back double what he lost. The reason is because he didn't wait to get to chapter 42 to give God praise. Uh -huh. He didn't wait till the battle was over. He started shouting and praising God. Yeah. He didn't wait until God restored everything he lost. He praised God when God took it. Yeah. And when you learn to praise God when he takes it, you show sure enough can praise him when he gives it back. I don't think much about a Christian who only loves God when the sun is shining. I don't think much about a Christian who only praises God when they're feeling good. It's when the bottom falls out is when we need to give him the glory. If everything you have is gone, you can still show up at the mount and get your praise on and hear the shout. When God came to take it, listen to Job's word. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Quick, quick three points now I'm done. First of all, you got to praise God for the gift. Everything you have is a gift from God. The house you live in, the car you drive, the clothes you're wearing, the job you're going to in the morning, your friends, your children, your husband, your wife, everything you have is a gift. Every good and every perfect gift comes from above, from the Father of lights in whom there's no shadow of turning. Thank God for the gift. Uh -huh. Then when you thank you for the gift which the Lord gives, when the Lord takes away, praise him secondly in your grief. Yeah. Uh -huh. There's some who are so temperamental in their praise. Yeah. They're so sometimey with their hallelujahs, Pastor Washington. Condition just got to be right for them to praise God. Stop being a thermometer and start being a thermostat. Right. A thermometer goes up and down depending on what's happening outside. But the thermostat yes, stays sir. the same temperature yes, inside, no matter what the temperature yes, is outside. Yes, sir. Paul said, I'm learning whatever state I am to be content. I know how to shout when I'm up. I know how to shout when I'm down. When I'm sick and when I'm well. When I'm broke and when I got four or five dollars in my pocket. God took your mother because he wants to be your mother. God took your father because he wants to be your father. God took the stuff you thought you had to have to make you realize when you hit rock bottom, you discover that he is the rock at the bottom. I lifted up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. Anybody here know that God wants to move the idols? Out of your life so he can give you himself. Uh -huh. Or to have two or three witnesses who can testify right now that when God got you out of that toxic relationship, yeah. it may not necessarily have been a divorce, it just might have been a deliverance. Yeah. 
you're better, you're strong, you're wise. Because God took that fool out of your life that you shouldn't have been with in the first place. Yeah. Amen. Lights and water. Yeah. Because the worst thing, uh, not waiting on God, is wish that you had later on. Sometimes God's got to take from you what you think you can't get along without to make you realize that he was there all the time. Worship him for the gift. Worship him in your grief. The Lord gives and the Lord has taken away. But here's the shout. And somebody I'll hold you right here. The Lord gives, the Lord takes away. No matter what the day brings, he says, blessed be the name of the Lord. In other words, give him the glory. Uh, blessed, that's Sunday morning talk. Uh, blessed is uh, Sunday morning talk in the midst of your Friday painful experience. Uh, because no matter what I have to do without, I know God will make it up for me. No matter who walks out of my life, God will step in. No matter what I lose financially, if the Lord is on my side, I know he'll make it up. Because if God be for us, who can be against us? Anybody here suffer some loss in your life? And you're here this morning and not out of sanctuary, not crying about what you don't have, but praising God for what you do have. Oh, I have my health. I have my strength. I have a roof over my head. I have food on my table. I have friends I can call on. Is there anybody here who knows when your friends walk out? Yes, yes. That the Lord will step in. Yes, yes. Won't he be everything that you need? Yes, yes. Uh -huh. Don't wait till the battle is over. Yes. Don't wait until he responds to your prayer. Yes. Don't wait until the, the miracle happens. Go ahead and praise him right now. Yes. Give him in the glory but I heard somebody saying when praises go up bless me come down is there anybody here that needs a door open right now you ought to go ahead on and praise the Lord is there anybody here that need a way made this morning go ahead and start praising Trust him, and somebody said, if you can't trace him, 
go on and trust him anyhow. Now and forever. Shall we all say amen? Amen.